Welcome to the kinematics of uh, rigid body motion. Today we are going to discuss the k decline parameters. Uh, we know that um, specifying the orientation of a rigid body requires three independent parameters. The Klein parameters were introduced in order to facilitate the integration of complicated gyroscopic problems but their usefulness extends to numerical calculations as well as in other kinds of physical problems involving rotations or uh, rotational symmetries. To this end, uh, we are to consider a two-dimensional complex space of complex variables u and v. And when we, when we consider the, the linear transformations of these variables, so from u and v to u prime and v prime, then the, the coefficients of these transformations can be cast in the, in the form of the matrix Q presented, uh, presented here. Now, uh, due to the fact that this space is complex and the coefficients are complex numbers, currently we deal with eight real quantities. And our first requirement is for Q to be unitary, which is, uh, which is the condition here. And if we take its determinant, this uh, automatically implies uh, this, this condition as well. So, uh, written expli explicitly, uh, equation 50 uh, expands into the, the, the set of conditions here, which are, uh, are in fact four, given the fact that this one involves uh, complex numbers, so uh, both the real and imaginary part of this, uh, of the left-hand side, uh, have to have to separately be equal to zero. So these are four conditions to which we add uh, a fifth one, which follows from the uh, from the unitarity condition and the, the the restriction on the value of the determinant. But this this additional requirement only fixes the phase angle, as the magnitude of the determinant itself follows from the unitarity condition. So this fixes the matrix to be to be unimodular. Uh, therefore, we have a total of five conditions. So we have arrived at uh, three uh, independent parameters, the, the same number required for the rotation of a rigid body. Now, from the conditions in, uh, in the set 52, uh, we can find the, immediately find the relation here between the, the parameters. And then from 52, 53, and 54, uh, we can simplify things further to, to this particular condition, and then putting 54 and 55 together, uh, this condition. So now from, from the two of these, the, the, it follows that the matrix Q can be, can be cast in this form uh, with the additional requirement followed following from the set of conditions 52 uh, of the of the equality here. We will consider now a uh, matrix uh, Q of uh, dimension uh, two, 2 by 2 uh, with the condition that uh, it, is, uh, it is a unitary matrix and has complex elements. We can then define uh, an additional matrix P uh, having the having the form here, where the coefficients x, y, and z are the coordinates of a point in real space, then it is clear that with this with this form, P is uh, uh, self-adjoint and uh, has a has a vanishing trace. Uh, both of these properties are preserved by a similarity transformation. Which is, uh, which is the transformation of P that is associated with the complex coordinates U and V transforming under the matrix Q. Thus, uh, in order for the, for the conditions here to, be, to, to remain satisfied, the transformed matrix P prime must have, the, must have the structure here. And furthermore, due to the fact that uh, the determinant itself is invariant to a similarity transformation. Uh, it follows immediately that uh, uh, this, uh, this equality uh, holds. Uh, therefore, what, what we have obtained is precisely the orthogonality condition as the length of the, of the vector remains unchanged. 
uh, as such for every complex unitary matrix of uh, dimension uh, 2 times 2 there exists a real orthogonal matrix of uh, dimension uh, 3 times 3 and it follows that if, if let's say we were to go from the vector x to x prime through the orthogonal transformation beta to which there corresponds the similarity transformation of p to p prime through q q1 and if we were then to transform further from x prime to x double prime through the orthogonal matrix a to which we can associate the similarity transformation from p prime to p double prime through the matrix q2 then if we were to simply undergo the, the direct transformation from x to x double prime through a, an orthogonal matrix C, then uh, P double prime should uh, transform from P through a similarity transformation involving the matrix Q3, which is given by the product between uh, uh, Q2 and Q1. Uh, so any, any relation between the matrices of one set is satisfied by the corresponding matrices in the other set. As such, the two sets of matrices are said to be homomorphic. If the determinant of Q is equal with 1, the multiplicity of associated Q matrices to an orthogonal matrix is reduced to 2. Furthermore, the unimodularity requirement restricts the association to proper orthogonal transformations. In the language of group theory, we say that the three dimensional real orthogonal proper matrices form what is known as the special ortho orthogonal group in three dimensions and the two dimensional complex unitary unimodular matrices form the special unitary group in, in two dimensions. Now from, uh, from results 55, 56 and using the the, the definition here for these complex quantities. Uh, we can write the, the similarity transformation of P, so the, the matrix P', uh, P prime that is obtained from applying uh, the, uh, the similarity transformation on P through, through the matrix Q. Uh, as, uh, as given here, or uh, in a more shorthand notation, the, the, the representation here where uh, uh, where each element is given by the uh, by this uh, sequence of uh, of um, equalities and uh, therefore uh, from fr from from this set of conditions we can we can solve the the last two equations uh, in such a way so as to have uh, uh, the, the primed coordinates of the vector on the left hand side and the unprimed coordinates on the right hand side and then uh, we can immediately write the uh, proper orthogonal matrix of this transformation in, in the in the form shown here uh, so th this matrix expresses the orientation of a rigid body in terms of the coordinates alpha beta gamma and delta which are the Cayley Klein parameters the convention of equation 59 for the for the structure of p that was chosen here was selected so as to agree with uh, customary usage in quantum mechanics otherwise there are other alternative ways in which the matrix can be set up now the k decline parameters are constrained by uh, equations 55 56 and 58 uh, in addition to that we can also introduce the, the Euler parameters, E of index i going from 0 to 3, uh, through the definition here. So uh, the Cayley Klein parameters alpha and beta can be cast uh, in the form of the real Euler parameters through, through these equalities. And then from equation 58 and 65, we obtain this this uh, this condition on the on the four Euler parameters, and then the the matrix A can be immediately cast into this form, uh, which uh, uh, which makes the, the the reality of its of its elements manifest. 
and uh, we notice that the off-diagonal elements vanish only if three of the parameters are zero. Then the remaining parameter cannot be chosen in such a way so as to have at least one diagonal element equal to minus one. And, and as such, neither of these two representations of the matrix A can describe a coordinate inversion or any improper orthogonal transformation. For each of the transformation matrices uh, 443 through 445, which were written in terms of Euler angles, one can easily construct the Cayley Klein parameters corresponding for the transformations of um, equation 63. And uh, the, the, the matrices are given here. It's, it's, it's very straightforward to, uh, to, to find these expressions and uh, they, they will automatically satisfy conditions 55, 56 and 58. Furthermore, due to homomorphism, the, their product uh, gives the, uh, the, the total transformation Q and it has the, it has the expression here. And as such, uh, what, uh, what we have obtained are the uh, Cayley Klein parameters uh, written in terms of the of the Euler angles, or equivalently the the Euler parameters uh, once again written uh, written in terms of the of the Euler angles. The matrix P can also be written in the in the form here as a a sum of three matrices multiplied by the um, three components of the of the vector that uh, that we are rotating and uh, these these uh, three matrices denoted by sigma of index 1 and 2 and 3 have the expression here they are known as the pauli spin matrices they do not transform as vectors and must have the same representation for all cartesian coordinate systems if uh, equation 73 is to hold but it is convenient to think of them as the components of a vector, so so as to be uh, so in order to write the matrix P as um, symbolically as a dot product between the vector R and the quote unquote vector that would have as components the the Pauli spin matrices. Uh, this set of matrices, together with the identity matrix in two dimensions form a set of four independent matrices and as such any two-dimensional matrix having four independent quantities can be expressed as a linear function of them. Particularly it can be written in this way uh, where um, in, 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 in older branches of mathematics sometimes Q is identified as the, the quaternion matrix uh, E0 becomes the, the quaternion scalar and the imaginary part is the uh, quaternion vector. Uh, if we were to write the Q matrices corresponding to rotations about the X, Y and Z axes through the angles theta, phi and phi, then um, their uh, their expressions are those uh, are those given here and you, you can see right away that they can be expanded in uh, in this form so um, each Pauli spin matrix is associated with rotation about a particular axis and may be regarded as the unit rotator for that axis uh, also symbolically we can write uh, for instance, the, the matrix Q theta as the exponential of sigma 1 having the, the argument here. Generally, if a matrix A is the exponential of a matrix B, uh, having the, also the complex imaginary unit involved in the, involved in the argument, then if B is uh, self-adjoint, it follows immediately that A is unitary. In other words, uh, Q is unitary as the Pauli spin matrices are Hermitian or self-adjoint. Uh, lastly, it is interesting to, to note the following uh, peculiar property. 
uh, we defined the matrix for a rotation three dimensions about the z-axis uh, through an angle phi uh, using the letter D and this matrix for an angle corresponding to uh, two times pi radians is just the unit matrix in three dimensions. However, the, the corresponding matrix Q when transforming under the same value of uh, two pi for the angle of rotation phi uh, returns minus the identity matrix in two dimensions. And uh, obviously if, if we, we were to rotate again for an additional angle of two pi, we would obtain the identity matrix in two dimensions. So it will be noted that both plus and minus the identity matrix in two dimensions corresponds to the uh, identity matrix in, uh, in three dimensions. That is, there is an isomorphism between the pair plus minus Q and a given transformation A to which these matrices correspond. Or in other words, Q is a double valued function of A. Objects exhibiting such peculiar rotational properties are known as spinners, and the, their double valued nature under rotation is uh, related to them having half integer values. Uh, they are very important in quantum mechanics, uh, but it is important to, to note that uh, uh, in spite of their behavior, uh, the, the physically observable properties always remain single valued under, uh, under rotation. Um, in summary, we have discussed rotations in a two-dimensional complex space through unitary unimodular matrices characterized by the Cayley-Klein and Euler parameters and the Pauli spin matrices. We have established the isomorphism between the special unitary group SU2 and the special orthogonal group SO3, uh, as well as the descri description of Cayley-Klein and Euler parameters in terms of Euler angles. In the following, we are going to discuss Euler's theorem on the motion of rigid bodies. So with that being said, I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video worth your time and I will catch you later. Goodbye.